Alright, hello. Welcome one, welcome all to Skyrim Legendary Edition. So, um, so yeah, as you can see, we are still in Helgen. I just made my character. I am playing a Nord, and, you know, just a standard, um, uh, warrior-like character I'm hoping to play as. And <laughs> I love that line. He goes, legends don't burn down villages. <laughs> and then I was just like standing around, uh, like seeing, seeing if they would move first, and I guess not. So then I go up the tower, of course, how that's supposed to occur, and we see the dragon bust through the wall, <laughs> and literally cook that guy. It's pretty brutal. But yeah, you can see we're playing on legendary difficulty. We touched that fireplace for like two seconds. Uh, it wasn't a fireplace, it was a fire, but we touched it for like two seconds, and we lost like almost 25% of our health. That is insane. Um, oh. Alright, we, yeah, we gotta, gotta dodge the dragon fire, of course. Yeah, so I'm just like, alright, you can, you can do you, dude. I'm going over here. So yeah, we, uh, oh, 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 oh. yeah, I didn't want to, <laughs> I didn't want to step into that either, you know. Um. Yeah, because we saw what happened to that guy. So, yeah, so right now we're just kind of heading towards the, uh, uh, the, the Helgen proper, you know what I mean? The, the way out, of course, of Helgen. So, so I decided to go with Ray, Rayloff, um, because the, um, I think the Stormcloak section of the starting area is a bit easier, for sure. Um, plus it gives you access to heavy armor a lot easier. Um, and I'll show you that in a second. Looks like we're the only ones who made it. So yeah, right now we just have to listen to him talk for a minute. And, um, and yeah, I'm playing this without any mods or, um, or anything like that. I just wanted to just kind of toss on legendary difficulty and experience the game again. So I'm hoping you guys find that interesting enough. There we go. So now our hands are officially free, and you can see my character there. Um, but yeah, I went ahead and grabbed some loot. I'm going to equip the armor and the axe there. And don't worry, I'm, I'm just looking at my character in third person. I'm going to play most of the game in first person. Um, so yeah, you can see I'm going to favorite my weapon. There we go. So I favorited my weapon. And I'm also going to favorite my restoration magic. Um... That's going to be the main way that I, um, that I heal in this game. You know, I'm not going to really rely on potions or, um, you know, or other things like that. I'm, I'm just going to straight up use restoration magic. I think it's nice, you know, to just have it on demand and it's something that can be upgraded to rather than like, oh, you know, here's, you know, the, the couple set versions of health potion. So yeah, so here they're going to open the gate. And we are gonna see what we can do here. I'm trying to get a sneak attack. Gonna see how all this works. Oh, it did not work. It did not work. <laughs> and I remember I was trying to uncrouch here. I was trying to figure out, I'm like, what button is to crouch? Oh, there we go. And there we go. So I uncrouched. And I'm trying to, like, block. And it's not really working. Um, <laughs> he's just kind of cutting them in the back while, while I'm like running around. Oh, there we go. And now once he's distracted, then I'm going to start swinging. Oh, there we go. Power attack on that guy. Um, as you can see, you don't really do a whole lot of damage. <laughs> really. There we go. So I'm going to equip healing to get back my lost health. And there we go. But yeah, you can see how little damage we're doing. But the cool part about this is that uh, your combat skills take a lot less to level up because you hit the same enemy so many times <laughs> um, so yeah so the main thing is just me like you know trying to focus on this this guy first oh there we go there we go one-handed increase to 22 so yeah i'm gonna grab his armor and his sword of course um i figure yeah i'll equip the imperial light armor for now and then I decide to go with the Imperial Sword instead. So, I don't know. It's just something a bit different. Ooh. 
And there we go. Yeah, I'm trying to do some power attacks to, uh, to sort her out a little bit quicker. Oh, there we go. <laughs> oh, there we go. Yes. And finally, the first two enemies are defeated. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, as you can imagine, this is going to be like one of those longer, you know, um, playthroughs because it takes so long to actually take out the enemies. Um, so, yeah, as you can see, um, I'm, I'm trying to see about dual wielding for now. Um, and then I remember she had a second sword on her body. So we're going to go ahead and equip that as well. And there we go. Now we're dual wielding. <laughs> um, so yeah, as you can see, I already got my set of heavy armor as well from that uh, Imperial officer. And uh, yeah, we're just going to kind of be... I'm going to head this way and see what I can grab. Um you know, because because I do remember that uh, that this is the side if you follow the Imperial guy, so there is some stuff that you can grab. Like I just grabbed some gold there. Just kind of looking around. Uh, there's some gold on the table. So there we go. I mean, every little bit of gold is gonna help because I'm gonna end up like buying uh, crafting materials, you know, armor, weapons, you know, etc. Um, so there we go. Just kind of looking around, looking around. Not a whole lot to loot over there, but I did get some extra gold and, uh, you know, and some uh, wine I can sell too, which is nice. So yeah, there we go. So we unlocked it. And now we head deeper into Helgen. You know, the, uh, I will say, like, after not playing Skyrim for so long, it's actually really cool to, like, come back to it and, like, just recognize how ahead of its time it really was. Oh, 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 oh. So here, so I'm trying to like, there you go, yeah, I'm trying to like, not overcommit to fighting these people here. Oh, that actually did a lot of damage. Ooh. All right, all right, there we go. He's, he's kind of pressuring me, so I'm just like, power attack. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Bobbin weaving. Ah, oh, jeez. There we go. Oh, there we go. Okay, so that one's down. We kind of split him off from his teammate to make it a bit easier. Um, his teammate. Um, we we kind of split the enemies in two. And there we go. Apparently, um, the, uh, the AI guy um, that I'm following around took out this guy. And I'm trying to think about what I want to grab here to see if I might sell something. And I am going to end up grabbing the extra armor sets. Um... You know, that way I can sell that for gold or, um, you know, or whatnot. I'm just making sure I have all the good armor equipped right now. And, uh, and yeah, now I'm going to kind of loot this area. Um, so a good rule of thumb, um, if, you're, if you're not going to use whatever you're grabbing, is you want uh, 10 points of value for every weight, pretty much. Um, that'll make sure you don't get over encumbered and it'll make sure that you're really grabbing the most high quality stuff. Um, so that's kind of the rule I follow is like, you know, if, you know, if it's got like one weight, it's got to have at least 10 value to it. Um, so yeah, so I mean, potions, um, but that's a, that's on stuff you're not going to use though. So, I mean, if you're going to use something, obviously grab it. Um, but yeah, like, uh, like alchemical ingredients, I'll pretty much always grab regardless of value. Um, you'll see me favorite health potions just in case. Um, that's just kind of if I'm out of magic though, because I plan on using healing for most of it. So yeah, right now we're heading deeper into Helgen. And here we go, we're gonna have to face off against our first mage. Now we kind of cornered, cornered them in this little corner here. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, it's in, in this section is a lot easier because the enemies aren't really focused on me. <clears throat> so see, like I grabbed the hood because it was one weight and ten value. Um, Iron Mace, I'm, I considered it, but I'm already doing really well with the swords. 
Um, so yeah, right now I'm looking around, making sure I loot everything. Oh, there we go. He gave me lockpicks. So I was going to just try it right away, but then I started looking around for a torch because uh, if you don't know, when you have a torch out, it actually helps your lockpicking skill. Um, but, you know, I, I figure, okay, I can't grab the torch. I'll just go ahead and pick the lock anyway. So, uh, so yeah, there we go. We did that, and we're grabbing the loot, which uh, mage robes are actually very valuable um, in terms of, like, sell value. So we're going to be taking those, and uh, I'll be selling those to the first merchant I come across. There we go. So we opened that one, too. There's nothing really in here, but I am upgrading my lock picking skill by picking these locks. So, um... So yeah, might as well while we're here, you know? So, uh, so yeah, as you can see, I'm struggling a little bit with this lock, but it'll be fine. Um, there we go, we got it open. And, uh, yeah, again, nothing much. I'm gonna go ahead and check out this book. There's nothing really, you know, to gain from it. It's not marking a location or anything. Um, it did have 12 value, though, so I will go ahead and grab it, um, so I can sell it to a merchant. Oh, and there we go, I see a shield... Um, and I mean, having a shield is nice on legendary difficulty just to block damage, <laughs> um, because just everything hits so hard when they actually are swinging at you. Um, so yeah, as you can see, I, I favorited that shield right away and, uh, here I'm kind of trying, trying it out because again, I haven't played this game in forever. And yeah. So right now we're just kind of looking around. Um, I remember you can pick this lock. Oh, and there we go. I probably broke my own pick there, but, um, but yeah, just kind of upgrading my lock picking skill. There we go. And I should hit level two, right here. Yeah, level up, level two. So let's see. Um, what are we gonna grab? What do you think? Um, I, I was considering steel smithing, because steel armor is really nice. Um, also the heavy armor upgrade, maybe, because I'm always going to be wearing heavy armor, I feel like, and characters are hitting so dang hard at the moment, um, where I do feel like I might need that heavy armor upgrade. Um, another consideration is novice restoration, um, because the healing spell we have right now counts as a novice healing spell, but, uh, but yeah, we'll go ahead and grab the heavy armor. Um, I figure survivability is way more important than smithing right now especially since i can't even smith I, I haven't gotten out of the initial dungeon yet so uh there we go we'll grab some bone meal and some coins you know coins are always important because you can go ahead and buy stuff of course but uh but bone meal is a alchemical ingredient which uh we will be going into alchemy um i i don't remember any of the particular recipes but uh you know just kind of combining the ingredients and just hoping to get something good i think is um one of the more interesting parts of skyrim so yeah here we're gonna head into this major room with all these imperials there we go i go to block the arrow but he misses anyway so it didn't really matter there we go oh one handed increase to 25 go hit him with a power attack oh geez yeah i realized i'm getting attacked from behind and there we go oh yeah and now they're getting surrounded by my comrades here <laughs> um, oh let's see there we go so yeah oh and there we go we took him out i'm gonna grab and grab the arrows and the bow um i'm not gonna use the bow very often um only probably like once or twice in the whole entire playthrough just to kind of remember how it feels like but uh, but yeah i go ahead and swap to healing and heal up to full and then i decide it's party time and pull out the dual wield swords let's see there we go so yeah we took out that imperial soldier uh, got some more arrows, of course, which will be nice uh, when I get my companion, um, you know, some kind of follower, because I'm going to give them all my arrows, so. Um, all right, there we go. Come on, jump. There we go. I get the flank. And then I missed most of my attack there, but that's okay. There we go. 
one-handed upgrade to 26. There we go, got some more bow, um, <laughs> bow fuel. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, grab some more arrows. And there we go, we clean up the rest of the Imperials. And grab some more arrows, which is always nice. Like I said, I'm going to give them all to my companion. I'm not quite sure how that works in this game. Um, you know, like, uh, like in terms of, like, you know, if the AI uses the arrows or whatnot. But I assume it would be, you know, somewhat useful. So, yeah, so here we go. We're going to head on further into this dungeon. I think we only have, like, a few more enemies left in this dungeon. Um, you know, between spiders and, like, a bear, I think. Uh, which, I mean, I don't consider that to be a spoiler, because everyone's played Skyrim at this point, pretty much. I mean, it came out in 2011, um, you know, and I mean, it's not like it's spoiling any story stuff. Um, you know, it's literally just some enemies in the beginner dungeon, so I don't think that's much of a problem to be talking about it before it comes on the screen. But, uh, yeah, I got some extra gold and a minor healing potion. Again, I mean, I don't really expect to use the healing potion for anything. But, uh, you know, I don't know. It could come in handy. So, yeah, here we go. We're grabbing some more coins on the way. And I think we're right around the corner from the spider fight. So, let's kind of see how that... Yeah, yeah, I see the <laughs> I see the spiders. I'm like, oh, jeez. Here we go. <laughs> um, well, I mean, because, you know, th they, they are poisonous, if you don't know. Um, it, I don't... Um, I think it does do a little bit extra damage, but it's mainly to do with, like, draining stamina. Oh, there we go. Boom! Kill shot! <laughs> which, uh, which was amazing. I didn't think I would be one-shotting anything on Legendary Difficulty, but apparently, um, you know, generic spiders can be one-shot with sneak attacks. So, so this is what I meant with kind of... I just wanted to use the bow one time. Um, and I figure, you know... I'll go ahead and use it against some spiders. Uh, right now I have the arrow knocked, and I'm trying to figure out how to not to use it. And there we go. I just swapped to some swords, and it didn't use it. Um, but as you can see, when you actually enter the room, more spiders drop down. So that could be quite problematic. Um, so as you can see, I'm just kind of swinging on this spider here. I am losing a lot of health, though, so I'm going to try to back up here and heal a little bit. There we go. Oh, and there we go. I got a finishing move. My first finishing move this playthrough with a sword. Very cool. Um, too many eyes, you know? Yeah, no, I fully agree. Spiders are sketch. Um, but anyway, yeah, we're going to go ahead and heal up here. And there we go. My restoration increased to 16. Which, uh, which again, is going to be important because that's my main way of healing. You know? Um... So yeah, we're going to go ahead and grab these spider eggs, which is pretty gross, but it is an alchemical ingredient, so we can go ahead and turn those into valuable potions, either, you know, either healing potion that we might use, um, or, you know, or something to sell. But, uh, yeah, I went ahead and made sure I am still on legendary difficulty, because that bit with the bow and arrow was really easy. Like, I did not expect to one-shot any spiders, so I want to make sure I was still on legendary difficulty somehow, um... And here, I decided to do something very stupid. I <laughs> I wanted to see if I could fight the bear. Um, and I mean, you know, it, at level 2, it's probably not the best idea to go fighting a bear. But I'm going to try anyway. And as you can see, he did like, oh my god, he did like 15% to my health with one shot. As you can see, I'm getting decimated here. Even blocking, I just took another like, well, like 8 to 10% my health and you can see i'm kind of trying to bait him around here jumping around and trying to avoid getting chomped on and as i get a little bit of distance here i equip my healing spell and there we go we're gonna let our uh, our companion here finish off the bear <laughs> but yeah that is how i almost died to a bear in uh oh and there we go yeah i did get a disease as well so I'm now suffering from stamina, um, from a lack of stamina, because I got bone break fever from that bear, of course, which, um, which I don't know if that's like a legendary thing or not, because 
w when I used to play this game on casual all the time, I barely got diseases, like, ever. So, to already have a disease, I, I think that's something to do with legendary difficulty, you know? Um, but, uh, anyway. We're gonna head on out here. And we're gonna see Skyrim proper for the first time. And look at all those mountains and trees and oh and survival mode. I'm gonna say probably not. Um, I could do survival mode, but you know, I I mean I don't know. It's 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 more so just like adding realism to the game. Um, not so much like um not so much adding like I mean it does add a little bit of difficulty, don't get me wrong. But it's more so like for more immersion, in my opinion. There he goes. Glad you saw him for good. So yeah. No way to so they. <laughs> then I decided to just like kind of walk around, you know, kind of basking in the glory of surviving the tutorial dungeon. All right. So yeah. So pretty much, we're just gonna be kind of walking on the path. And uh, taking in the scenery on the way to Riverwood. And um, something you'll notice is that there's actually a lot of alchemical ingredients growing on the side of the road. You know, um, um, in terms of like flowers and, uh, you know, other things. So, yeah, you'll see me grab like mountain flowers and other things. Um these are worth stopping for, um, because not only do they not take up a whole lot of carry weight, um, so, I mean, you can just sell the ingredients, but you can also turn them into potions and either sell or use them for a lot more value. Um, and again, it's not taking up much space, so, I mean, you, might, you can carry a lot of these ingredients. But, uh, as you can see, I just got the quest, um, a, a second ago while I was talking, um, to join the Storm Stormcloak Rebellion. Um, I don't know when exactly we'll do that, but uh, but we might, um, you know, we're pro we probably will complete the Civil War quest line at some point. But, uh, but as of right now, I'm just going to gather these ingredients and head towards Riverwood. So, you know, I, I want to know, what, what do you guys remember from your time in Skyrim? You know, whether that's the most recent playthrough or whether it was your first playthrough. You know, what do you guys remember from your time in Skyrim? Because I remember um, my first time seeing Skyrim gameplay. Um, it was this walkthrough with Todd Howard. Um, the I think he's I think he's the game director um, for Skyrim. I'm not really sure. Um, I know he's a very uh, prolific character when it comes to Elder Scrolls and Fallout. You know, people really uh, associate him with modern-day Bethesda design. Um, but anyway, it was gameplay, and it was narrated by Todd Howard. And uh, you can actually go watch this gameplay on YouTube still. And it just, I don't know, it really opened my eyes to how expansive this game was going to be. And just how hard they worked on the atmosphere. Because, I mean, back in 2011, you know, um... I know, sorry, he's kind of talking while I'm talking. Um, I hope that's not too disruptive. But anyway, um, you know, back in 2011, you know, we didn't have these, you know, like, massive, expansive games as much. You know, like, think about it. Fallout 4 wasn't out yet. Uh, you know, uh, I don't know. Like, you know, just, just like, back in, back in 2011, I mean, you know, the Xbox One wasn't even out yet, I don't think. Back in 2011. So, you know, so that tells you how far gaming has come since then. And it was just mind-blowing because, like, you see, you know, this gameplay with Todd Howard. And, you know, I was just like, this is insane. You know, this is actually amazing. And um, and I remember I actually went out and, uh, and got it the day it came out. <laughs> and I was just kind of adventuring... And uh, it was very cool. Uh, there we go. We, our heavy armor went up to 16, and we hit level 3 while we were combating those wolves. 
Um, and as you can see, I see the red dot on the map, and I'm like, where's this wolf? And, uh, oh, there he is. <laughs> He's just kind of looking at me. I'm looking at him. And uh, there we go. I jumped down, and he chews on me. Very weird. But uh, what can you do? So let's see. So we're going to equip our healing spell, of course. And, uh, and yeah, there we go. So we're back up to full health. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, you know, a couple wolves wasn't ever really a danger, but it is a lot more scary being on legendary difficulty. But, uh, but anyway, yeah, I, I don't know. I just remember, um, playing Skyrim in general and just, you know, like, I don't know, you know, so, so I'm just wondering what, what's, what's something you remember from Skyrim? You know, let me know down in the comments down below. Um, you know, because it's it's such an expansive game that it means so many different things to so many different people. And I don't know. It would just be really interesting to see, you know, some of these replies. But yeah, as you can see, we are coming up on a river wood now. And, uh, if you didn't know, you can actually grab mushrooms from the bases of these trees sometimes. Um, so I just grabbed some mushrooms, and, uh, again, I can use that in potion crafting. Um. So yeah, as you can see, I'm still kind of grabbing, you know, alchemical ingredients, and really... You know, that is one of the cool parts about uh, about Skyrim, is the details. Oh, and uh, let's see, we're leveling up again, because um, I'm remembering I hit level 3. I'll probably grab Restoration at this point. Um, yeah, there we go. Cast Novice Restoration Spells for Half Magicka. That will make sure that I can heal for a lot more before running out, which uh, which might be really useful. But, uh, but yeah, in general, uh, that's the cool thing about Skyrim is all the little details. Like, you know, if you just go from point A to point B, and, you know, you kind of have, like, tunnel vision on your objective, then you miss a lot um, in terms of this, like, big, expansive open world and, like, you know, all the little details, like, oh, hey, there's alchemy ingredients on the road, you know, like, on the side of the road, or, you know, or there's wolves here, and there's bandits there, you know? It's just, there is a lot of details that you can go ahead and miss either way. Um, so, yeah. So yeah, as you can see, we're kind of scouting this area for, you know, for more alchemy ingredients while I'm waiting for them to kind of all assemble like the Avengers on this little island. Uncle Raylan, can I see your axe? How many heroes have you killed? Do you really know all six storm types? And, uh, yeah, in general, I think the plan for the Skyrim playthrough is going to be, um, so we made it to Riverwood. We're going to go to Bleak, Bleak Falls Barrow. Um, actually, we're going to go White Run, and then we're going to go Bleak Falls Barrow. And then I'm thinking joining the Companions after that. Um, you know, um, I could... In theory, I could just make sure I do the Dragon part. Like, you know, just to make sure Dragons start appearing. But, um, I don't know. And then, um, but anyway... So, so the plan was to make it to Riverwood, and then go to White Run, and then do Bleak Falls Barrow. Um, at least for now, that's that's as far out as I was thinking. Um, I don't think we'll do that all in this episode, but uh, you know, just to kind of have a layout for the foreseeable in-game future. So, um. So yeah, let's see. I'm trying to rack my brain. So, um, 
I got distracted like like watching them talk about um, talk about the whole circumstances. Cause again, I haven't played this game in a while. I can hardly believe it myself. But what happened? Um, so, but yeah. So outside of making it to Riverwood, I was also going to recruit uh, Fendal. F uh, is that his name? The the, the elf that works. Um, F Fendal, F Fandal, something like that. Um, and he works at the lumber mill in Riverwood, um, but he's really good at archery, and you can actually recruit him with, uh, you know, by doing his little side quest, you can have him as a companion. Um, so I wanted to try to do that before I left Riverwood. Again, I don't know if we're going to do that this episode, but, uh, but again, um, so yeah, we're going to be able to take all this stuff. Um, I'm, I'm really interested in the rings, especially, because those are really lightweight and high value items there is something you could do for me. For and now she's going to give me the quest to go talk to the Jarl in Whitehelm Whitehelm oh no sorry not Whitehelm <laughs> Whiterun <laughs> um, and yeah so so we got to talk to uh, Jarl Balgruff in Whiterun to uh, to get troops for Riverwood's defense against the dragon, but uh, but before all that, we're gonna head on over here to the blacksmith in Riverwood. Um, and I'm kind of seeing if I can take that stuff because you can if you follow the Imperial um, guy out of Helgen. Yes, that's late. How about you smith me an iron dagger? Here's everything you need to make one. So, um, so yeah, I went ahead and, uh, and asked him if he needed any help around the forge. Now, this is just a nice, like, introductory way to, like, work on your smithing skill. Um, it's, it's more so meant to work as a tutorial, but he does give you free stuff to, um, to start working on your smithing skill, so it is worth doing. Um, so yeah, so you can make new stuff at the forge, of course. And then, if you want to upgrade the stuff you already made, you can use the grindstone or the workbench. And then the the main other want to keep thing How at the smith armor? is the leather rack, leather the rack, like the leather tanning rack. And you're about to see that, so I, I can um, so you can turn animal pelts into leather, and then use those uh, to. You know, uh, make weapons and armor, of course. I could forge this. Ah, good. A lot of weapons and armor need leather for straps, fitting, that kind of thing. So yeah. Let's so now I'm gonna make a hide, hide helmet. Here's the rest of which, uh, which again is another piece of armor. Um, I do go ahead and check out the workbench. Um. So there we go, I made the hide helmet. Um, but yeah, you know, again, I just recommend doing this tutorial section because it gives you stuff um, that you can use towards upgrading your smithing skill. It's not like a huge upgrade, but it is something, you know, to kind of start you off. Um, and I mean, that is something weird about Skyrim is that... Um, is that people don't care what you're doing. They'll just kind of come up and talk to you. It's very strange. Um, but I imagine that would be kind of difficult to code, you know, to try to try to tell, um, you know, to try to have the NPCs figure out whether you're doing something or not before they start talking to you. Like, I just think that would be like complex to do so that's probably why they haven't done it i'm gonna go ahead and upgrade my iron shield because again i think uh that will help me block more damage potentially um so yeah and then i was gonna check out gr the grindstone um it turns out i need steel ingots which uh, I do not have any at the moment, so I'm gonna go ahead to the inn. I think, if I'm remembering correctly. Oh no, that's right. I grab um, Fendal's quest. I think. 
Did I see you talking to Sven? Maybe not. Maybe. Never mind. But I would stay away from him if I were you. Nigga, what's your problem with Sven? He's a bard, so he says. Occasionally, he finds time to do his job here at the mill. Thinks his ballads and sonnets are going to convince Camilla Valerius to marry him. As if she would say yes. An intelligent, beautiful woman like her wouldn't fall for that nonsense. <laughs> because I hope. <laughs> um. I've been thinking. Maybe Camilla needs a little help seeing Sven for what he is. Could you, could you give her this letter and say it's from Sven? I think I've matched that Nord's lack of cleverness perfectly. <laughs> So yeah, so basically you can get a side quest to, you know, um, to get him as a follower, like I was saying. Um, you can also do the inverse of the side quest and get Sven as a follower, but I find him to be less useful by comparison. Um, you know, especially um, back last time I played this as a melee character, which again was a while ago, but... So as you can see, there's Finn in the corner. The ale is going bad. We need to get him a bed. But yeah, I'm going to go ahead and use the alchemy lab here. Um, so basically, uh, if you somehow don't know how alchemy works, you kind of pick uh, ingredients, and you can put them together to make potions, of course. But each ingredient has four effects, and you don't know the effects until you utilize the uh um the ingredients you know in in trying to make some potions so um so that's kind of what i'm trying to do here i'm just kind of mixing together various things and hoping to make something good um so yeah so here i have three ingredients that aren't compatible so um so that's all i had left but so uh, but yeah and then I got creeped out because she was, like, standing behind me, <laughs> sketchily. I need some more time to make friends. You've had more than enough. Besides um, so yeah, I was looking for, um, for Camilla, the, the person you have to talk to to get, uh, Fendal as a follower. But, uh, but again, I couldn't find her at the moment. Um, so right now I'm just kind of gonna look around see if there's any more alchemy ingredients growing around here um because you know um you know because i just emptied my stock um <laughs> by trying to make potions so um so yeah and and i mean some barrels you can just straight up take stuff from without it counting as stealing like uh like i was able to just grab all that salt without anyone thinking like oh my gosh he stole it so uh so that was cool you know, um, and I see this guy just kind of standing in front of his doorway. I'm like, that's sketchy. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so now I'm going to wait um, a good amount of time so I can hopefully ask this guy about his wares, maybe get some new armor. Um, you know, because I mean, I do have some stuff to sell. And then, um, and I mean, he might have some pieces of like steel or something um, that I don't have yet. So that's going to be kind of the idea. I see him heading down the street now, so I'm just kind of waiting for him. And if you try to talk to him before he is at his, like, station, basically, he won't talk to you about selling stuff for some reason. It's very strange. Um, like I said, the way uh, Skyrim handles NPCs is just a little interesting. Um... And I mean, I thought I heard something, which is why you saw me just look up at the sky. I thought I heard, like, lightning or something. So I was like, hmm. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, in general, just kind of waiting for this guy to get to his station so we can kind of see what he has for sale. I could forge you a w I see no harm in it, if you have the skill. The grindstone will improve your weapon if you've got the raw material. You can use the forge to make something new. Um, oh, there we go. So yeah, and then and then see the option to buy from him finally appeared. So we're gonna go ahead and see what he kind of has. Um, so yeah, he does have steel weapons, which again are, are pretty good. Um, steel warhammer, like things like that. 
Um, I was gonna try to look for some armor, though. Like, steel, um, see, like, we got steel armor, steel cuff boots, steel helmet. Um, so yeah, and then I was looking at how much gold I had, um, and then I figure I can sell some of the extra stuff I have. And then that way I will have more gold to barter with. Um, and then I figured out iron arrows aren't worth any gold, so I figured I'll just hold on to them for my future companion. See, like I'm selling my extra armor. Um, and I mean, you'll notice that not everything I have to sell is in my inventory right now. And that's because certain vendors will only buy certain things. Like, for example, as a blacksmith, this guy's only interested in weapons and armor. Um, so if I want to sell other items like potions or um, jewelry and stuff like that, I got to find a more general goods vendor or something else. So as you can see, I just bought the steel gauntlets. And then I also bought the steel boots because it was the exact amount I had left in gold. So I went ahead and equipped those um, All right, those two pieces of armor. So now I got steel gauntlets and steel boots. So I mean, I don't know. That, that will help quite a bit, I imagine. Just having better armor, of course, is important. Um, but yeah, so now I'm going to go ahead and stop for this point. Um, at the start of next episode, we're going to go ahead and um, head into the general goods store, um, buy some stuff, um, and then uh, get Fandel as a follower and head on towards Whiterun. So I can't wait. <laughs>